Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Welcome to Lenses and Amps. I'm Andrew Tinker. Unfortunately, my co-host, Shaw Graveland, couldn't be here today. He's being an adult today. Um, we are starting the show to try and find out what sparks the fires inside of the musician's heart. When they grab their guitar, their microphone, their drumstick, their bass pick, whatever the hell they are playing. Um, their love for their gear, their love for their beer. They just find out anything about them. Stories that they have to tell. I just want to get it out to you guys, the fans. So this first show that we are shooting, Mocha Mokaya, we're hosting their fourth annual New Year's Eve bash with guests, Living Dead Girl, No Tomorrow, at the Red Dog, and they also had some delicious pulled pork from Hot Belly's Mamas. Mwah. So we had the honor to catch a few moments with the lead singer, John Ellis, from Mokomakai. Um, unfortunately, we didn't get the backbone of Mocha Makaya, um, Bobby Deuce, Adam Hay, Jerry Pastik. Who knows, maybe if this page goes somewhere, and if you guys like this video enough, maybe they'll want to do a catch up later on or something, maybe? Who knows? See where this goes. Um, but if you want to hear the questions that my co-host Jacques Graveline asked him, you can check him out now. Backstage passes tonight here. We got Tinker on the Lens and Snap Shock. I'm the host. And tonight we got here at the Red Dog, John Ellis, the Super Beast, the Mocha Makai. <laughs> All right. So how are you doing, bud? Good, good. You pumped? Nope. Yeah, of course. Four years. Four years at the Red Dog here. New Year's Eve. Before the annual New Year's Bash. All right. And also an album release? Album oh, release. Great. So, if I'm on the album release right away, Alright, I got a little list here. We're gonna talk about a guy named Ian Burton, if I'm saying it right. Ian Burton. Ben. Yeah, he's the Ben. Ian Burton's a Canadian legend of indie scene, Toronto, and, and whatnot. And uh, you can go check him out, okay? But how was it? Oh, it's so good, man. Like, I, uh, come on was a big deal for me when I was a kid. That band was, like, so harsh. Like, I just remember seeing, like, just like spitting and fucking rocking out, and it was just so intense and so loud. Um, what you says Kate though, right? you want to elaborate on who? Kate was the bass player for Kamala, yeah. and Blurton's tone is just so good. Like I knew, I knew as soon as we started this project that like, I was like, we have to work with Blurton. And then, like Change of Heart, and uh, you're on, and Bionicle, and like, on every project he's been a pro public animal, this very project. It's really helping out that new scene, I guess you could say too. Continuing from the 90s and 2000s. It's it. it really good at blending old school sounds and old school concepts with like more modern production, which is kind of our jam, so it's a good I like that. I like that. There's a lot of love. And it's so a lot of love. I love that. And uh, speaking about love, what about gear? What's your gear? Love for gear. My gear, I, I'm like, I'm a trainer guy. Partially, I think it's cool that it's Canadian, but honestly, man, like you could, you could throw that thing off a building and it would still run. Like it's amazing. And the tone is just so driven and so awesome. The trainer's a big amp. Mine's a small amp, but it's a big, big sound. I took it to uh, Jeremy Spencer and Jeremy Dottie in town who rules also. And, uh, and it's it's incredible. Like my, I use the white game one. And so it's the same schematic as a partial one. So, uh, yeah. yeah. You can definitely hear that. Uh, and, uh, so when you're recording that, speaking of that, on uh, like your songs, Shorts on the Sun, Final Track, Awesome, like I was saying earlier, like it gives you that re nice reality kind of feel to it. Black Sabbath. Uh, really so, uh, what kind of was it? An SG rock on yep. album? Yeah, my SG is actually, it's got a cool story. It's when I was a kid, the first rock show that I, like live rock and roll show I ever went to in my life was uh, Argyle. I love those cats. Uh, JP, who used to play in Recall Guy, was the drummer in Argyle back in the day. So, I was like 14, and I was like, oh god. And I had like negative shirt and I wore up to the Gordon Best one night and I was just like blown away by these guys. They were so good. And uh, Jordan Mack, who's a local dude, right, another yeah. great little guy. Uh, he gave me my Gibson SG as a gift, and it was the Argyle guitar. Oh, wonderful. So it's wow. my primary, it's my fucking baby. And, and that's what you use on the album. That's right, yeah. yeah, yeah. Another song on there, which I really liked, was World of Sorrow, where it has an acoustic opening. Yeah. Great fucking lick. It's, yeah. Well, you know, we gotta yeah. do that someday, it sometime. Great. <laughs> yeah. So I like that mix there, because it crunches, you know, eventually it gets going and fucking yeah. blows your head off, right? Well, it's fun, it's very, 
like vocal heavy and a lot of like a lot of like um, you yeah. know Alice in Chains and Soundgarden kind of Absolutely. inspiration coming. That out transition between the late '80s and the early '90s. Totally. Where you need like a you know Days of Blues kind of really doors off too a bit on the acoustic rock song. Right? Totally. Sort of in that, uh, yeah, man. Jar of Flies and like yeah. even like oh, like Loud Love by Soundgarden. It's right. Like that kind of like I was a big fan of like. Uh, ultra mega okay and screaming like very beginning, love, yeah. love. like I love yeah. this psychedelic dynamic stuff and we don't have a lot of that on our records so we figured we'd try some of that whatever. that's right showing the depth that's yeah great great move great move and so um, the touring or not the touring but like when you're going around Toronto and playing around do you have some favorite places that you want to tell us about in some way one of the huge bummer is the uh, coalition Right. in uh, Kensington Market, which I think yeah. that tonight is their last night of business, yeah. which super yeah. sucks, but they were awesome, they've always been really good to us, and the Bovine Sex Club is our home away from home, right. like, you know, yeah. I go, like, I always, every time I go in there, I see, like, five familiar faces, and I just love that room, and when you pack it full of people, it's I, just so insane. I know you feel like, I was, I love it too, like, yeah, I got great. to play there with a great crowd, and I fucking relish that moment, it's yeah. just a great spot to do that, yeah, and Toronto does have a nice love for the music scene yeah you? man I went in there because I, I started playing in a band from Toronto called White Cowbell and I, I, my first time going up there to rehearse so I stayed overnight and I was like I'm gonna go to the bovine and see what's going on it's Sunday so probably nothing but whatever and I walk in there's like nobody outside I'm like it's probably empty in there and I open the door and it's like packed front to back with people singing along with Painkiller by Judas Priest at the top of the <laughs> I was just like like what? Like what people do this yeah. still? This is amazing. So yeah, I like that place yeah. quite a bit. But, uh, the pool line changed over time because I remember the first time I did, I was a over in Toronto, and like the pool table was at the front. And yeah, the, like, the bar was like, on the other side. Yeah, and then it's yeah. like now it's like you walk in, there's like a the great beautiful stage up at the front. Yeah, totally. Like that. You got a nice little lounge room in the back. In the back, the back the and stuff. It's good. Yeah, and there's nice good rock and roll scene there. Um, just like cherries, I like that too. Um, yeah, White Cow Valley, Yeah, are you in touch with those guys still a little bit? Yeah, we still, yeah. We, I left, I left amicably, you know, yeah, that's so, good. and I got some, like, really, awesome, really weird experiences yeah. I don't think I could get anywhere else, yeah. so. Well, you're going to probably get more, especially after oh. this album, though, you can get it online everywhere, right? Yep. It's yeah, yeah, it's all up on uh, Spotify, uh, iTunes. More importantly, you got to come out to the fucking live show, right? you got to come out to the live show. CDs for one lucky fan because they love you guys that much. And if you want to win these two CDs, please like, comment, share, subscribe to my page, and I will pick one lucky winner by January 18th, 2019. So once again, if you want to win, like, comment, share.